In the previous movie, we used the MASH toolkit to finish off our HUD. In this movie, we'll show you how to export this raw material to Adobe After Effects for finishing. You can either continue working from your previous file, or load the provided MASH UI Part 6 Start, provided in the link in the description. Before exporting, we'll need to add some lights to brighten up the scene. Go to Create, Lights, and start with an ambient light. This will fill the entire scene with background light. To see it, turn on Display Lights. Again go to Create Lights, and this time create a directional light. Its default direction points in roughly the same direction as the camera, so leave it as is. Use the Attribute Editor to bump up its intensity to 2. Finally, select the Pixel Cube and increase its material's incandescence. This will give all the objects that use the default Lambert material even more brightness in your renders. Now that our overall image is livelier, we're ready to export our effect. One of the reasons we've been using mesh reproductions rather than instances for our mesh geometry is because reproductions support render layers. This feature allows us to render our overall scene one mesh effect at a time, so we can then import them into After Effects on distinct layers. This will provide us with maximum flexibility during the finishing process. First output just a single render by clicking the Render Current Frame button here. By default, Maya uses a built-in software render to output the current frame of your scene to a 2D image. However, this is just a single comped image of one frame of our animation. We want multiple images of each separate component over the entire animation. For that, we'll need to do a batch render. Go to the render settings. Instead of using the software renderer, let's switch to the hardware renderer via the dropdown. The hardware renderer is the fastest renderer available, and although the image is pretty basic, it's enough to suit our purposes. Go to the Maya Hardware tab and select the production quality preset. Go back to the Common tab. Set Frame Animation Extension to Name Number Extension. This indicates to Maya that we want to batch render multiple frames. While you're at it, set the image format to a more standard PNG and the start end frame range to 1 and 120. Also set the renderable camera to HUD camera. Now that our renderer is set up, we next need to separate out our layers. We can do that via the render setup window. Currently there are no render layers in our scene, so create a new one by clicking the button here. Name it Earth Layer. Now we can't place scene objects into this layer on its own. First we need to add a collection. Right click the layer and select Create Collection. Name this collection MASH Earth Collection. Notice the property editor is now populated with attributes. The one we're most concerned with is this box, which lists the contents of our collection. We'll want to add our earth object to it. Middle drag the MASH Earth Repro Mesh from the outliner to this box. While you're at it, also disable the Include Hierarchy option, since we only want the Earth Mesh and not everything attached to it. Now try turning on the visibility of only this layer by clicking the eye icon next to the layer name. Maya displays just the globe. Meanwhile, if you click the eye icon next to the scene at the top, Maya displays the entire scene again. Now let's add another layer for the bolts. Just like before, click the New Layer button to create a new layer, and rename it Bolts Layer. Right-click to add a new collection named Mash Bolts Collection. Then middle-drag the Mash Bolts Repo Mesh to the Collection list, and turn off the Include Hierarchy option. Now you can switch between the two individual layers or the scene layer. Continue to do this for each Mash network adding them to their own layers. For the Plexus Sphere, make sure you place both the Repro Mesh and Trails Geometry in the collection. Once you've confirmed each layer separately, there's only one remaining thing to do before exporting.
go to the File menu and click Project Window. A project folder holds all the elements of a scene in one place. Ordinarily, we would set this up before we start working, but in this case we can get away with setting it now. This will ensure our rendered images appear in the appropriate subfolders. Create a new folder or use the folder already containing your scene file. Now we're ready to batch render. Go to the rendering menu set using this drop down box. Then go to Render, Batch Render. If you watch the status line, you'll see when Maya begins batch rendering the images out. Now all you need to do is wait. If you go to the Images folder in your Project folder, you can see that Maya has split up all the rendered layers into their own folders, which contain image sequences. If we play back each image sequence, we can confirm that they hold the appropriate layers. Now we can import them into Adobe After Effects, or the finishing software of your choice, one layer at a time. From here, we can add our color and 2D effects. However, suppose we want to make changes to our footage. For example, the static camera is a little boring here, and it's a little too busy seeing both the front and back of the globe turn in different directions. The good news is we can fix all these things in Maya and then port those changes back to After Effects. First, let's mask out the back of the globe. We can once again make use of our Earth Sphere to accomplish this, so select it in the Outliner and press Shift-H to unhide it. Obviously we don't want it to show up like this, so right-click the sphere and select Assign New Material, then go to Use Background. This colors the sphere to match the background, thereby masking out the effects behind the sphere. Now we need to export these changes back to After Effects. However, rather than export everything, Let's just export the layers affected by our changes. Open the Render Setup window. Notice that each layer has this renderable button that indicates which layers can or cannot be rendered. Disable all the HUD UI elements and the overall scene layers. These are layers that won't be affected by the change we just made. Make sure to add the Earth Sphere object to these layers so it's included in your re renders. Now when you batch render the scene, only the renderable layers are output again. And if you return to After Effects, you can right click any of the corresponding clips and select Reload Footage to refresh the layers. You can use this kind of workflow to move back and forth between Maya and After Effects for quick iterations of your effects. As another example of this, let's add a new camera motion to the scene by having the camera zoom into a specific place after the initial animation. Go to frame 96. Select the HUD camera in the outliner or by using the Select Camera icon. Then right click in the Attribute Editor to set keys on its transform attributes. Now go to frame 144. This will require you to extend the time slider range a bit. Before setting a key, notice that your globe, plexisphere, bolts, and ring all stop spinning by frame 144. We need to set their post infinity settings just like we did for the rings pulsing in part 3. However, in this case, we also need to set their tangents to splines, because a linear setting will just make them flat. With that done, you can now zoom the camera into the USA. 
Set another key on the camera's appropriate transform attributes. This time, because we extended the timeline, every layer is affected, so make them all renderable again. You'll also need to extend the range of batch rendered frames in the render settings. And like before, update all the media in After Effects. Using this workflow, you can continue to work between Maya and After Effects to eventually end up with something like this.